Hello, everyone. Hi, Roger. Hi, sis. How are you? I'm great. How about you? Yeah, terrific. Terrific. Enjoying this, enjoying this cool weather that we've been having. 55 degrees this morning. My house still is not warm. Yeah. I'm I refusing to turn the heat on. I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I'm, I'm with you. No heat. I'll suffer. <laughs> well, I sat on the couch and I put a blanket around me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh yeah, I get it. You know, we um, uh, a little bit off topic, but uh, Saturday we took a ride down to a little town called Homer, Georgia, and there was. <laughs> The, the reason we went down there is we, we bought a couple of these uh, IBC totes. And if you, I don't know if you know what those are, but they're... I don't. They're big storage containers. They have a metal frame around them. Okay. Okay. Where are and, you putting them? Uh, we're going to put them downstairs. We're going we're gonna to use them for water storage. Oh. Be because uh, each one is 275 gallons, and we bought two of them. Wow. So we, so it'll give us 550 gallons of water storage. That's and, good. Yeah. And, um, you know, there people have been talking about the possibility of uh, possibly an EMP or, the you know, an attack on the grid, on the electric grid. How about and, water being poisoned? I'm hearing that so much. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've heard that. That's too scary for me to even I, think oh, me about. Too. Yeah, you know? me too. But right. it's so good what right. you're doing. So how are you preserving the water? Are you putting anything in it? So, well, there's a couple of things we're going to have to go to. Be, because of where we live, we got to worry about freezing. You know, we got to <laughs> got to worry about uh, algae growth and, and all of these things. So, yeah, uh, I'm still doing still doing some research on that. But basically, uh, uh, we're going to have to wrap the tanks, tanks in a blanket which will keep the light out, which will keep the algae growth down, which will also help insulate for the winter for freezing. So that's anyway, so that's what we got to do. But um, yeah, so we just picked them up. I've got to going to have to wash them out. They, they had sunflower oil in them. When you, uh, about them. you, you got to Yeah. You got to be careful when you buy them because they have food, food uh grade tanks and they have non-food grade tanks, right it has to be on, yeah depending on what it, we stored in them yeah this is a really good discussion that we're doing because while you're learning this and we're talking back and forth and what rex is doing it's good for two reasons one there are other people out there besides you and us looking at the same type issues and this is causing our viewers to become aware of this if you haven't thought about it. The other thing is we're taking dominion over the situation. Mm -hmm. And we've actually been talking about our authority that we have. And so this ties in on that same type thing. I mean, you know, you, we can take a spiritual authority over, but a lot of times God wants us to do things in the natural too. Um, you know, we were, you know, last week we actually, I used the illustration of me laying my hands on the trees and praying mm -hmm. for the trees. Right. Um, so the same thing, our water supply, I mean, uh, because of the threat of the water and that we, I guess we have a really good purifier here in the house, uh, like a, oh, anyway, it's one of the ones you add the water to and it filters, we could actually go to the pond and take the water out. But uh, there were certain things that our son was telling us about that was in the water that could possibly go through. And we're thinking about the threats, like what you were talking about. So we have friends that have a well. So Rex goes over and picks up about 15 gallons of water uh, once a week. I haven't really asked him how often it is. And he's been putting some iodine in the water. I can't taste it. I guess maybe when it goes through the filter, it takes all that taste out. But uh, it's the same thing because we've talked about uh, we have to just let it set on the porch where there's light. And even though it's in the shade, it's still light. And I'm aware of what it can grow like that, even in three or four days. Right. So, uh, yeah, so he's been using iodine. 
as far yeah. as I can tell, it's being very successful. Yeah, that's one of the things we're looking at. And a few drops of chlorine also, you know, helps. Right. You know, you don't want to obviously don't want to overdo on the chlorine like they do no. in the city city water no. supply, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but no. yeah. Yeah, the good news our filter takes removes chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> right. But you but know, up right. here up here in the mountain, our water comes out of the ground. It's it's uh, it's a well it's, water and it depends on elect depends on electricity. So if we have um uh if our power even if they're even if it's not an attack on the grid but just simply power failure for whatever reason we don't have water here so um you know well i so believe that would be here too anybody anybody on city water you know uh it gets pumped through the city i believe through the power of electricity right. if i'm right well you know cities used to have every you could go into every town and you see the big water tower standing up there well they that's how the cities used to do it. They used to exactly. pump the water, pump the water up into the into the water mm -hmm. towers, and a water tower was a storage, yes. a huge storage reservoir for you know for the for the town, and then it also created a water pressure because it's so high in the mm -hmm. air. Yeah, it gravity created the water fed. pressure. You know, so the pumps would only run to fill the the fill the water tower, and then it, they would shut down. You know, but now. Most towns have gotten away from using those, and they're You're right. and the and the pumps feed directly right out to the houses, and so you're not even going to have if you lose the power, at least before when you lost power, you had what at least until that tank drained, that water tower drained, you you mm -hmm. still had water for you know a few couple of days, but right. well, um, while we're talking about this, there may be someone that's listening to us that hasn't thought about you have storage in your house and you don't even realize it, uh, hot water heater, uh, even the tanks of the uh, toilets, all have some source of have water in it that can be used. Right. Uh, you probably want to purify it if you're able to, because I did have a purifier on hand just so you, it would taste better. And right that and it's been sitting so i would highly recommend that um but uh those are just things of course we know that from living in hurricane land that's right that's exactly right yes <laughs> so we have our gener we have our generator from from florida from hurricane land and <laughs> so like do you word. so do you yes. guys and uh so we have our generator you know to pro provide us with electricity and and um, and now we're going to have some water, you know, storage. So, but you know, you're talking about the dominion and authority thing, and it's it's really twofold because if you think about Joseph in the Bible, it was because of Joseph planning ahead that they were able to weather out, you know, several months of drought uh, that right. they that they went through because God warned them ahead of time. Now, I guess God could have just said, uh, well, you know, just pray against it. It's never, you know, you'll be fine. It's never going to happen. Well, no, because <laughs> sometimes, uh, sometimes the, we talked last week about the earth needing, needing to restore, to be restored. Sometimes, uh, sometimes the earth has to go through cycles and different things. It and does. so. And so uh, it's it's a lot bigger picture. You can't, you know, you can't just simply speak and and everything be okay. I there's like time, what you're saying. That, it you brings know, there, the balance in It Roger. brings a balance. There's a time when God will and may ask you. We did that. We talked about that, about praying against hurricanes last time. Yeah. Yeah, and we yeah. used Jesus as the illustration of that, speaking against the storm. Right. Uh, it reminds me of two scriptures. One is uh, in the Song of Songs. No, Lamentation. A time to be born, a time to do this, a time to do that. There is a season for everything. And then when you're talking about Joseph there, uh, in Proverbs, it talks about the ant. You know, mm -hmm. the ant is wise and he can see, he knows there's got to be a time when you have to store up. Um and I know in your occupation, Roger, I don't know if your wife has done this in the past, um, but I know I have.
because I know construction is what I call up and down. Mm -hmm. And so when it's going good and there's plenty of work, I have always stored food over the years. Mm -hmm. um, plenty of food. That way, if Rex is out of work for three to six months or something like this, we've never lacked because I've always had food. Right. And um, now maybe I'm exaggerating when I say three to six months, but I'm positive I could have gone at least three months uh, because we were in a house. I can think in Clemens where my whole basement, the shows, I had a lot of canned food on it. Um, then years later, I learned how to preserve uh, grains and beans and make them last five to 10 years. In fact, our saw, <laughs> yeah, this is, goes back to, I laugh now, Roger, it's sea saw. I mean, I bought it for like pennies. Okay, literally got it in this five gallon container. Well, it's very edible, but I call it my salt lick. Because over <laughs> the years, yes, over the years, it's got it's hard as a rock. It's yeah, like, I bet it did. <laughs> yes. So Rex yeah. has to take and clean off the hammer, and he they're like this, you know, to break up the saw. And then I throw it in the blender, and guess what? I got plenty of salt. <laughs> I said I have enough salt to last our us our entire life. <laughs> I've told the kids, don't buy salt. Come get it for me. But they don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, you know, uh, our parents, you know, came from what's been called the greatest generation. And yeah. they're the ones that lived through the Great Depression. You know, and if you think about the ability, they knew that generation, the generation before, you know, knew how to prepare for hard times, and they really and they, did. They all canned, you know, the canned their goods and food, and they grew up at a time when there wasn't even refrigeration. You know, back in the turn of the century, like you know, eighteen hundreds, and they didn't even have refrigeration. So, yeah, so we are we are most assuredly a very spoiled generation. You know, where everything is at our fingertips, and, and right. we don't. And we really don't know how to do anything, you know. No, really, we're dumb <laughs> if you think about it. Yeah. And uh, because we don't know how to do things, I've been getting some of these books from the old timers, okay, and how they do this oh. and how they do that. Foxfire. Yes, Foxfire. The Foxfire is a great books. One. I've got some yeah. of Foxfire's books. I know you do too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah there's a lot of wisdom there. Uh, in Our fact in our Greensboro right here, uh, animals can be a problem by the agriculture center and farmlands and things like that. And so the, the he's actually a minister, but he's the only trapper in our area. And all of the triad, there's only one trapper. And they've had trouble trying to get people because there's not any trappers, but they don't know the old ways. He right. takes it. He, um, they get the oil glands from beavers that's used for perfume, like over in France. Mm -hmm. uh, they finish the hides, um, and they sell all this. Mm. And he goes out with an eighty-five-year-old man, and he's learned how to do this, and it's a skill that basically. <laughs> Nobody knows. Right. But beavers, if you get into farmlands, it would destroy the farmland mm -hmm. because all of a sudden you've got water where you don't want it when you're growing crops. Mm -hmm. They're damming it up. They're no, damming it up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, let's let's go ahead and, and uh, move into today's session. What, well, I, and... We're already in today's session. But let's look at the scripture that goes with today's session. Yeah, okay. That's so let me actually, yeah. let's let me go ahead and share my screen. And all right. So did you got can you see that? I see that restoration of all things. Right. So you know, last week we were talking about the 
uh, had the that intricate connection that God has made between the restoration of the land and how it was tied to our restoration. And when the King James says that the whole earth is groaning and waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. And uh, and so we looked at that and we see that there is a there is a restoration process that that God is in the in restoring from the time of the fall, from the time mm -hmm. in Genesis and when man lived, Adam and Eve lived in the garden and everything was perfect as God had made it. And then and then everything went to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> <laughs> and so and so ever since then we've been in this process of restoration. And so we last week we we covered a, a big part of it. We're gonna finish that discussion here today. And let's go, I'm gonna let's look at a couple of these scriptures. And the ultimate end of where we're going to go with this. So in Acts 3, verse 20, and I, I want you to think about this because this is a very puzzling scripture to me. It says, and he will send you Jesus, the Messiah, the appointed one, verse 21, for he must remain in heaven until the restoration of all things has taken place. I have contemplated that verse that line right there so much with the current doctrinal teaching that's been out since I've been a child. Yes. And I thought, this doesn't fit. But this is Paul saying no. yeah. he has to stay in heaven into the restoration of all things. Has and taken place, yes. Yes. So and I don't I don't know what that does to your theology but it sure messes with mine a lot <laughs> oh it doesn't it, it it really really does because you know i'm thinking jesus said when he went back to heaven he said make disciples of all nations and that's one of the promises that the nations would be restored does that mean we have to wait for the restoration of all nations it does say all things it does. Let's read on. Yeah. Let's see what else it says here. So fulfilling everything that God said long ago through his holy prophets. So whatever has been prophesied, and we could we could maybe argue that this restoration is a restoration of those that, things that have been prophesied by the prophets, possibly. Uh, we could interpret that way. But, you know, uh, there was an awful lot of prophecies. That's that. what I'm thinking. It still <laughs> no. leaves a big gap between what the Old Testament has prophesied and what is currently being taught. Yes. Amen. So let's go ahead. Verse 24. Then the final stage of completion comes, and we're still in, in, in Acts here. The final stage of completion comes, and he will bring to an end every other rulership, authority, and power, and he will hand over his kingdom to Father God. Verse 25, until then he is destined to reign as king until all hostility has been subdued and placed under his feet. Verse 26, and the last enemy to be subdued and eliminated is death itself. So we're being told here that Jesus is to gonna is gonna remain in heaven until the restoration of all things, until every rulership, authority, and power is handed over to his kingdom to, to Father God. And that Jesus is then destined to reign as king until all hostility has been subdued and placed under his feet. Now, boy, if if that doesn't mess with the person's theology, you know, I don't know because we're waiting, we're waiting for the rapture to come. We're waiting, 
we're you know we're waiting for a millennial reign to happen where Jesus is going to reign on earth for a thousand years and honestly I don't know what to do with this with these scriptures these verses but but we know that it's true and we know that there's that there is a an an end purpose that God has okay you know he he made everything perfect in the beginning in Genesis and then you had the big fall, and then you were in we're in this restoration process, and that restoration not only includes us back to the dominion and and power and authority that was originally granted to Adam, but um, but the restoration we saw last week, the restoration of the earth and our physical bodies. So it's all. It, all of that's tied together. And think about this, how there has been restoration in the church. You know, Martin Luther King came on. Martin Luther, or Martin Luther not King. Uh, you know, and he wrote the 95 Thesis. And salvation by faith was restored to the church. Then the healing movement. I'm just fast forwarding through history, you know. Right. And, and then the gifts being restored. I mean, you can look and see restoration taking place but can we honestly say it's all things you know yeah. now I, I can think back how when i was in bible college when i started questioning things because i began noticing oh they put scripture here and scripture there oh no there's a time gap here and this takes place here and this takes place there and and i look at that like what you're looking at in acts and i thought I don't see time gaps in there where something happens and something else happens. And uh, and so I've come to the exact same conclusion as you. And it is interesting because, you know, in the body of Christ, and I like the word churchianity, okay? I have been yeah, yeah. word because I'm talking about including all denominations that have Jesus as their savior okay and we differ you know one teaches one aspect another one teaches a different aspect and sometimes things seem to maybe conflict a little bit but basically we all have that jesus died when we receive him by faith and that is the center of what we believe and so there is all this division too about end time teachings but one of them has that Jesus doesn't come back until, I don't know if you've heard this, Roger, until everything is restored and he literally reigns as king and that's what he's waiting for. Yes, that's post-millennialism is okay. what that's called. That's the technical name for that. Is it really? Okay. Yes. Yes. So makes me wonder. All right. It does. It does. So it does. you could see where those who believe in post millennialism, you can see these scriptures tend to support that idea. You're right. right. They do. Right. So I'm not saying I agree, and I'm not saying I know how to justify this. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. With what? Uh, but I'm just telling you what it's what it's saying. The point that we're trying to make here, though, is that there is a restoration of all things that's coming. And Peter picks this up here in, in chapter 3, verse 13. He says, so Peter says, what's going to happen next? What we hope for is what God has promised, a new heaven and a new earth where justice reigns. Can you imagine how nice that would be? That would be wonderful. A new, a new heaven and a new earth. Isaiah 65, 17 says, the eternal one. Now look here. This is the eternal one speaking. Now look here. I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. The weary and painful past will be as if it never happened. And Yay. Then, and then finally in Revelation 21.1, it says, I looked again and could hardly believe my eyes. Everything above me was new. Everything below me was new. Everything around me was new because the heaven and earth that had been passed away. And the sea was gone completely. What a translation. How awesome. Isn't that cool? It yeah. is. It yeah. is so, so 
awesome. Right. Uh, I think that's the hope that we have. You know, it's the hope, no matter how it works out, the hope is Jesus is coming back. And if we are taking out, and we don't have to go through it because there is a scripture says pray that you don't have to go through these things, okay? Uh, and should that happen, praise God. But if we're, another scripture says to endure all things. So if we have to endure, God will give us the grace because that's also the promise. And he promises too that uh, we will not endure, will not experience what the heathen experience. Uh, that's my way of wording it. And, but the, ultimately is that God says, I'll never leave you. I won't forsake you. I won't abandon you. I am coming back. I am restoring everything. And that is our hope. And that hope scripture says is secure. Uh, it's solid. It's a rock. We use that term, the rock of our salvation. Um, another scripture says to put on the hope of salvation which is our helmet and yes. so what we're really talking about here is our hope roger it's the hope that god gives to us uh and that's how god wants us to look at it we're to see it through the eyes of hope and that's so essential because if you don't have the hope you're going to get depressed you're going to go in the wrong direction and it's not what God has called any of us to. So remember whose child you are. And if you're not his child, well, you need to consider becoming his child. Uh, that's really, really important. Um, I, I, If you're listening to this program and you're listening to other Christian programs, you know the way. You know that Jesus has said, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That belief is a solid belief that will enter your heart with that assurance of who you are in Christ. You will know that you are a believer. You won't have to guess. You will know. Amen. And you know what? I want to add one quick word to that, and that is you don't want to be part of the ones who experience eternal death in the lake of fire. Correct. You want to be a part of the one of the of the restoration of all things where God puts back together the order that he originally established in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden for Adam and Eve. He made a perfect world for them and a perfect relationship he had with them. He wants the same for you. And, and he wants the same for us. Go ahead. And it's exciting, Roger, because when you step into that, everyone. And you can be a little instrument and you see how you have come to bring restoration or order into things. Like with some of the examples over the weeks that Roger and I have given, it's like, thank you, Lord. I can't believe that you've done this. Lord, this is wonderful. So we want to encourage you, know Jesus Christ. Yes. And Father, we just bless you. Mm -hmm. Father, we bless Bless the people in Jesus' name for that Amen. fullness of the revelation of Jesus Christ in their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And God is extremely... Passionate. Yes, passionate about you. <laughs> amen. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>